You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Now is the best time of year to sell your home. We'll talk with a real estate expert about how to maximize the sale price and take some stress out of the process. Time now is 9:19. After the break, a local real estate expert stops by to offer tips on the best way to sell your house. And now's the best time to do it. Well, May is considered the best time of year to sell your home, and in some places, the month of June is also a good time to unload that house. There is a lot you can do to make sure your property gets top dollar. Joining us now with some helpful tips is Stephanie Malios. New Jersey realtor with more than 30 years of experience. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So busy time of year for people like you. It's a uh, spring market, uh, busy season, as they say. And why, is, why specifically now this time of year? Well, everyone waits for their flowers to bloom, the azaleas and the dogwoods. They think their house looks better then, but the spring market really starts in January and then starts ramping up by April and May because people start making their plans for the year and they want to be in in time for the school year to start in September. So they start looking January, February, March, and by April, May, they're starting to buy because they want to move in by the summer. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about staging the home. And first of all, you have some before and after pictures, yes. which I think is great. Um, let's look at the first one. I think it's a, there we go, it's an empty yes. place. Yes, the people had lived there for 50 years, so we moved them out, and then we painted the house, sanded the floors, put new floors in, <clears throat> changed all, all the light fixtures, and then um, we virtually staged it, but it wasn't quite popping, so we actually physically staged it, and it sold the very next weekend. Wow, and you, so staging, just changing, adding furniture, changing furniture, could add something like $50,000? Easily, because most people can't visualize a space. They think they can because they watch HGTV, <laughs> but when you go into an empty room, you can't quite understand the proportions and how it really works. Can you really fit a king-size bed in this bedroom. Mm -hmm. How do you know? But when you actually walk in and see it, then you can f experience the space in a better way. Now, do you need to hire a stager and what cost are we talking? I, as a realtor, will do sort of an initial mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. staging assessment, but I have a stager on staff and I send them to every listing that I have and they kind of evaluate, can they fluff with what the owners already have mm -hmm. or do we need a full-on stage? Uh we have another pic, not to cut you off, we have another picture of you guys changed the look of yes. this house. So explain what's going on here. Uh, that's actually me in there, but uh, the lady had moved out. She lived there for 20 years, and I said, just leave everything that you have, and the stager will work with what you have. And so she sort of moved things around and uh, reset the stage a little bit and used the lady's own furnishings. Wow. That's a big, big difference, That's right? a huge difference. Yes. But again, I'm just I'm just curious about the cost of a stager, like the range it can be. The first one that was a complete stage, that's $5,000 mm -hmm. for three months. So it's uh, with American Furniture Rental, and they actually brought all the furniture, mm -hmm. the designer set it up mm -hmm. and did everything. Everything in there came from one place. And it, it's a three-month contract. But if the house sells sooner, you know, obviously you give the, the furniture back. Right. But this is a million dollar house. So a five thousand dollar investment is really right. nominal like, in the big scheme of things. And there are several other things you could do, especially selling an older house, things like landscaping. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about some of these other things that you, you can do on your own. Absolutely. You don't want your house to be a drive by. So mm -hmm. the first thing you want is the front to look great. So painting the front door, having a cute doormat, making sure the landscaping is tightened up, maybe changing the color of the shutter. Um, having lots of flowers. Uh, if it's if it's winter, you can do winter a winterscape with maybe evergreens and things like that. So there's a lot of different things you can get to make the front look good. And then obviously, if potholes in the driveway don't have those, so even just seal coating the driveway can hide a lot of little little ills. And you've got some really good uh, tips for inside the home. I mean, like even pet odor and... Yes, smell is a big one. And most people don't notice that their house smells a little off because they're so used to it. So pet odors, no incense, no scented candles. A lot of people are allergic. You want the entryway to be bright and fresh. Um, just even towels in the bathroom. Leave the, leave the tags on and return them to the store when your house is sold. You don't <laughs> right. have to actually invest in anything. Clearing the kitchen counters, you know, people have a lot of clutter on their counters. Having nothing on there makes a huge difference. Sometimes by the time you do all of this, you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to move anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is how <laughs> and then just as we go, last just piece of quick advice that you would offer to people maybe looking to, to buy this, buy a home. To buy a house, you, you want to look at neighborhood first. That's the most important thing. They say location, location, location. It really is true. You can do anything you want to a house, but you can't move it. 
Got it. Thank you, Stephanie, so much yeah. for coming, and we really appreciate it. And we have all uh, these tips and more on our website, cbsnewyork.com. We'll be right back. Thank you. There's